Imagine if this was the news. But along with all of the usual death and disaster and division, we also got to hear these, the, the stories of hope and, and healing, but not just another dog on a surfboard. The thing is, this is the news. These, these stories, they're happening. It's just that we don't hear as much about them. But when you find them, the world can suddenly feel like a very different place. Why are we so familiar with all of the stories that make us feel scared or sad or angry, but so many of these stories come to us as a surprise? Why are we so good at reporting bad news, but so bad at reporting good news? That question is something that I spend a lot of time thinking about. And what I've learned after eight years of doing this work is that progress is never a straight line. Far too many still suffer in poverty from disease and are trapped by conflict. The struggle for equality, the fight for justice, continues in so many places in the world. We still have so much work to, to do to, to get done. We know that geopolitical tensions are rising. Climate change is genuinely scary, and we are still destroying too many parts of our planet. But when we only tell the stories of doom, we fail to see the stories of possibility. The hundreds of examples of progress in human rights, rising living standards, public health victories, clean energy breakthroughs, technological magic, ecological restoration, and the countless extraordinary acts of kindness that take place on this planet every day. I believe that if we want to change the story of the human race in the 21st century, we have to start changing the stories that we tell ourselves. And we have to remember that hope isn't a noun, it's a verb. It's not something that we have or something that we're given, it's something that we do. Millions of people around the world chose to hope in the last 12 months and then rolled up their sleeves to get it done. Perhaps it's time for the rest of us to do the same.